Welcome to the Maryland Players Show. So we are so lucky today to have another ACC legend in the house. Um, he was a member of the 1984 ACC Tournament Championship team, had 10 assists in that game too, uh, scored 1,087 points, which makes him in the top 50 all time at the University of Maryland. Um, 650 assists uh, at the University of Maryland, which makes him third all time. 13 uh, year pro career in Europe, all star seasons in Germany and France, uh, BBL Pokal champion in 1994, nine year coaching career at Wesleyan Christian Academy, one of the top high schools in the country and currently an assistant coach at High Point University. Coach Keith Gatlin, welcome to the show, my man. My man, thanks for having me. It's always great catching up, and thank God you have me on the show. I'm honored to be uh, rocking with you for the day. Oh, man, it's such a pleasure to talk with you, man, especially because, uh, you know, as a kid, man, just a, just a big fan of yours, man. And uh, so it's always a pleasure to be able to talk to you. So let's get right into it. So, so Keith, I, looking, looking, uh, uh, doing some research on you, man. I did not know this. You were born in Newark, New Jersey, and then you moved to uh, uh, North Carolina. I thought you were, uh, I thought you were born in North Carolina. So, how old were you when you uh, when you moved to North Carolina, and and what was it like uh, growing up there? Uh, I'm really from North Carolina, but I was born in Newark, and probably at the age five or six. Uh, uh, my family moved down to Greenville, so I still have relatives in New Jersey, but I was too young to remember that. So Carolina is, is really home for me, yeah. So so, so, what was it like growing up for you in North Carolina? Uh, it was excellent uh, because, you know, obviously being North North Carolina is basketball uh, crazy. And then from being from the eastern part of the state where it's not that much to do, you got the beach and you got like, you know, uh, stuff like that, but basketball is is where it's at. So, being able to play outside, then going inside, playing in the rec gyms, it was it was the best, man. I wouldn't trade for nothing in the world. So, so you honed your skills of uh, playing pickup games and things like that. So, one thing I always noticed uh, uh, watching you play, I used to come up to the, uh, the upper gym in, in the Coldfield House and play with us in the off season. So the one thing that stood out to me was the high dribble, man. And uh, I mean, it used to be guys and they like Muggsy uh, <laughs> put, and still couldn't take it, you know? And it was always amazing to me because uh, I used to always receive criticism about how high my dribble was. And so I always, you know, I, I took notice of that with you. And so, uh, you know, how did that, how did that come about? And were you a point guard always growing up? Yeah, I thank God my high school coach, uh, Shelly Marsh, who's still around, one of the best coaches in the history of North Carolina, mm -hmm. saw me as a freshman, and he was just like, yo, you're a natural point guard. You're 6'5", I was like 160 pounds. <laughs> be inside, so you, you know, you, you got to stay out there and keep doing your thing, but I really... Uh, always dribbled that way, watching Magic Johnson, uh, George Gervin, those guys play. And I tell my son all the time, and Walt, you remember this, I got so much love for you because in the offseason, we used to get it in yeah. all the time. And we had our routine where we did weights, dumbbell bench, stuff like that. Then we got into the gym, and what the young kids don't understand, we played knockout and then two on two. We didn't play no five on five because it was just like, rest your body, let's get that work in, three dribbles, and it was like me, you, Ken Clinton, uh, uh, <laughs> what's my man, Wardell, uh, you got Wardell, uh, brought that. so that was like my height of the day because, you know, you were six, eight long, could do it, Kevin Clinton was a strong guard, mm -hmm. And, and, and that's how I've always grown up. If you can't get stops, you can't get the ball. Yeah. And that's what kids are missing now because when you play five on five, you might be working on something totally different than the guy who you're playing with. And mm -hmm. everybody's not going to get back on five on five and stuff like that. So when you play that knockout, best four out of seven, you know, two on two, that's their work right there, man. You are absolutely right. I never, you know, I never paid attention to that part. And in the offseason, we, we did not play much five on five. It was a lot of two on two, three on three, one on one. Uh, uh, you got three dribbles. 
And, uh, you know, we were really working on increasing our uh, offensive skill set, you know, by, by doing those things. And so you, you, were, you were highly recruited out of high school, right, Keith? So what, what made you choose uh, the University of Maryland, especially, you know, being in North Carolina where so many uh, ACC schools are? Believe it or not, Maryland has a big following in the state of North Carolina because most people from Eastern North Carolina, you move to Raleigh, which is still the country, right? or you move to D.C. Maryland, which is four hours away. There's so many people in the DMV that's from North Carolina that just migrated four hours up the road. So for me to watch John Lucas, Eastern North Carolina guy, uh, Buck Williams, Charles Pittman, those guys are 30 minutes from me. It was like a no-brainer. And Lefty was a massive recruiter. He was just like, yo, I rock with these North Carolina guys. I had so much success with them. And so for me, it was just like, you know, do you go to NC State or Wake Forest or somewhere like that? Or do you go four hours up the street and you really around everybody from Eastern North Carolina that lives in the DMV? So it was a no-brainer for me. And it was the best decision I've ever made. So look, it must have been so much fun you know, throwing alley-oops to Speedy Jones, jumping out the gym and hitting my man Jeff Baxter for jump shots. But tell us about what it was like playing with the great Lynn Bias, man. It was, it was, we were so loaded at the time. Lenny and I clicked right on my visit and Lefty always said, look, man, I, you know, I like big guards. Agent Branch was like 6'8", two guard. Mm -hmm. um, after he was just like and Jeff Atkins was like six five, six six guard. He was just like, you that guy that can facilitate. I can move Jeff to the two. I can move Adrian at the wing. He right. was just like that guy that I think can really get us there. And when I met Lenny on my visit, man, people don't believe this. We played two on two pickup out at the uh Leonard Town to about one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, you know, guys were like, well, if you can go, let's go see, can you go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we went out there and got it in, and Lenny and I just clicked, man, like, I knew where he needed to rock, and he was the type of guy where if he got the rebound and he gave it to you, he was so fast how he ran, but he could shoot it, but throwing it off to him was just like, get it anywhere around the rim. <laughs> he but what a lot of people didn't understand, if you watch any of those highlights, Lenny only caught lobs from the right side. Right, right. Speedy right. could catch them from the left and the right. Right, right. But Lenny just, you know, would come up and fake you with that left foot and go back, and it was just like, it was over. Once yeah. I got anywhere up over the rim, and he had this guy beat, oh, it was it was incredible. But to answer your question, those were some great memories, and, and our practices were so competitive. You know, he was he was he was a special special talent, no question. So so after your your college career, you had a thirteen year pro career, right? And so um, and then after your pro career, you went right into uh, coaching at at, uh, uh, at the high school level, ultimately getting the Wesleyan uh, Academy, and that's a natural transition. You know, a point guard makes to go into coaching. Did you did you know that you were going to be a coach while you were playing? Did you did you have those aspirations all the time, or did it just kind of happen? Uh, I think I did because I toward the end of my career, I, I just saw like just thinking back, had some downtime. The coaches that got the most out of me, if I wanted to give back, how could I impact these young men? And I felt like if you connect with these young men, you can correct them. If you don't connect with them, you can't correct them. I know it's not right, but that's the sign of the times we live in. And, you know, my son is 15. If I want to talk to my son, I'm going to take that Xbox or that cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know it's not right, but that's just what these kids respond to now. So the latter part of my career, I started thinking about, you know, if I'm going to give back, I'm going to, you know, give back into this way with coaching. And it's very gratifying when you can see a young man get his degree and go on to play on the next level. And you don't want nothing from that young man. And when that young man really believes that you doing it from the bottom of your heart, you got something special because you know, Walt, there's so many crooks out here yeah. that are trying to latch on to these guys and to, I need you to help me when you get there or blah, blah, blah. 
Mine is coming from a place of love. Hey, you just give me a hug when you get your degree. I don't want nothing from you. Thank God I've been there, done that. And we call it even, you know, sweat equity. Once you get your degree and you go on to be a positive young man, we good. Yeah, you had a host of uh, uh, D1 uh, prospects come through, you know, including our very own uh, Andrew Wiggins, who ultimately became a pro. So you had uh, so much success at the, at the high school level. And, and now you're at uh, High Point University with a legendary coach like uh, Tubby Smith. Uh, what have you learned from uh, uh, coaching with a, a guy like him? I mean, I've been blessed to, to be on the staff for four years and to learn from, you know, obviously a Hall of Fame coach, one of four black coaches in the uh, NCAA history to win a national championship. And then I was blessed also to be coached by Left Giselle, who's already in the Hall of Fame. So um, I've learned so much from those two men on the do's and the don'ts. And, you know, uh, the most thing that I've learned is that sometimes you got to learn how to ignore, you know, you're not going to keep them away from the girls. Uh, you're not going to keep them away from doing things that kids do in college. You have to learn to ignore some things and just get them to lock in when you're with them and to give them their space also, because if you try to be too much of a time management in college, it's not going to work. You got to make sure you, you get the best out of them for the time you got them, let them experience college. And then when you see them the next day, come back to work. Yeah. So, I mean, it's got to be challenging times, you know, you're going through, uh, you know, trying to figure it out and, uh, you know, young and impressionable. And so that brings me to, uh, you know, the University of Maryland. You know, what's your thoughts on the, the current situation there with uh, Coach Turgeon's uh, 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 departure? Uh, it, it was it was it's sad to, to see it go because obviously, you know, I'm Maryland through and through and I wish the best for the program. Um, I see so much growth in that place because, you know, it's totally different. When we went there, who don't want to come to that? You got <laughs> praise facilities. You can get to any player that you need to. I mean, I, I, I'm hoping that, you know, it works out and that they make the right decision and who they get. But, I mean, I've learned so much from Lefty in recruiting. He told me a true story one day, and I live by that to this day. He said, recruiting is not what a lot of people think it is. He said, Keith, you've been recruiting since you've been playing pickup. I said, what are you talking about? He said, you go to a local gym and you got next and you got to pick the team, you watching the games, you're not going to pick the guy that's shooting all the time. You're not going to pick the guy that's not rebounding. You're not going to pick the guy that's not dead. You know what you like to do. You're going to pick the four that's going to keep you on the court. <laughs> and once he starts saying that and I start sitting back and listening to it, I'm just like, well, you know, you got a very good point. And he was just like, that's how I recruited for so long. I, I knew I had a stud in Lenny. I knew I had a really skilled guy in AB. I had a big guy in Hermanville. I had a dog in Herman, I mean, Ben Coleman. I had a dog in Hermanville on defensive end. I just need a facilitator like yourself who could shoot it, but also was selfless and you pass it and you took more joy in getting the dimes. And if it came back to you, you shot it. If it didn't, you moved it. And I, I never looked at that until he told me that. And so it, it's, it's, I kind of live by those principles a lot when, when he when he made that comment to me. Yeah, see, Chief, I wasn't like that, man. I was trying to get those buckets, man. <laughs> and I would have picked you because you can do that. <laughs> uh, so, look, man, look. Hey, so the last question I have for you, man. Let the viewers in on something about you that most do not know, Keith. Uh, I think most don't know that uh, – I'm an avid yoga guy. I mean, I'm real big on yoga, man. I'm hot yoga man. Now I do yoga a lot. I've been doing it for years. I took my teams to yoga all the time. They hated it, man. But Aaron Wiggins, a Maryland guy, he he broke his ankle at first, had a little fracture his, his uh, junior year. Like, man, tight. You need to go get yoga. He said, oh, coach, man, you tripping, man. I ain't getting yoga. I said, okay, trust me. You know, got him into yoga. He got hooked on it. You know, the rest is history. Uh, Theo Pinson was with me, yoga, hair, Giles. I'm a big yogi, man, so I, I, I do that quite a bit. And I love to play golf, man, so right, that's man. my new jump I, shot. I got I to take you up on that yoga, man. I've been hearing a lot of good things about that myself. So at this old age, uh, 
you know, running around is not too, not too pleasant. So we got to get to that yoga. I'm going to take you up on that sooner or later. Hey. I guarantee you, man, you get into that, you go, you know, once you see your, your body stretching and flexibility, you're good, man. I'm telling you, you're good. Right, right. <laughs> hey, well, Keith, man, hey, listen, thank you so much for joining us today on the show, man. And it's always a pleasure to talk to a great player like yourself and, and uh, such a, a, a great coach and, um, you know, just giving back to these young kids. And we appreciate you so much, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, brother. Hey, thanks for having me anytime, man. Great catching up with you. And I want to tell you thank you, man, because you you hone my skills on every day, man. Like I said, our routine, I don't know if you remember, lift weights. Yes, not, sir. And you used to drive. You had the green BMW, and you used <laughs> to go right one. We would go to the pizza spot right on the, the uh, right by the little bowling alley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I remember those times. It was great times, man. Great times. Great, great hoops. You know, great off-season hoops for me, man, for sure. Absolutely. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, man. Much, much success. To host a fan show or appear as a fan on a fan show, create a profile in Fan Media Network. Then look for the news page in our website and fan show resources page. Help yourself. We give show hosts a show graphic and team colors, a simple short show format, tips on pre- and post-production, ideas to get fans and guests on your show, Apple News distribution and show sponsorship sales and services to help featured show hosts earn money. Show hosts use our iPhone app to publish their shows. Our website supports Android users.